This is the facelifted Honda Goldwing. This motorbike has been on the market longer than many of us care to remember, but does it still stand a chance with the new competition around? Up close is the good old Goldwing with plenty of buttons which are huge so they're easy to press when you're wearing gloves. Over here, again, plenty of switches but the uh, two you'll be using mainly is volume and uh, tuning. And over here, my personal favorite in the Goldwing which is uh, electric reverse which uh, really helps making those three point turns. Now, the Goldwing is very much old school, which has its benefits, like this old school cable intercom. I mean, uh, if you're traveling a lot, these Bluetooth things, um, they tend to discharge quite quickly. Then there is uh, this little compartment here with a three and a half millimeter jack. Very old school, very practical, none of this Bluetooth pairing nonsense. No, but uh, old school also has its downsides, like um, this windscreen. You can actually alter the height, but you have to do it with these two latches here. And uh, whether, the, whether this... Ah, there you go. You can lower it. Now, whether this is raised or not, it doesn't really matter to the driver, because the driver will always find a comfortable position for him or herself. But the passenger, well, let the face speak for itself. What's important for me in the Goldwing is that you're sitting quite low, so I can easily reach the ground. Uh, it's a heavy bike and I'm quite short, so good, good foothold is, uh, is important for me. This was one of the problems I had with the BMW K1600 GTL. It was way too high for me and uh, I always feared that uh, uh, if it stalls and uh, I don't have time to reach the ground or fall, it'll look stupid and damn it will be expensive. To buy or not to buy, that is the question. Well, if I were a wee bit taller, I wouldn't think twice. I'd pick the BMW K1600 GDL, but since I'm, well, kind of short, I have to stick with the old but gold.